Steel Titan is the signature coaster at Dreamworld in Australia. At first glance, this ride looks like a clone of Europa Park's Blue Fire, but it has some key differences. First, it features a swing launch and a twisted spike. Second and more importantly, it features a spinning row and back. Do these enhance the ride experience? Find out in this review of Steel Typen. Dreamworld was devastated by a 2016 accident on their Thunder River Rapids ride. After the investigation concluded, the park removed the ill-fated water ride and in 2019, the park announced a major new steel coaster would take its place. This would be a near clone of Blue Fire at Europa Park. Blue Fire opened back in 2009 and has signaled a new era for mock rides. This was a diverse coaster featuring a launch, four inversions, and some airtime hills. Add in a super smooth ride and it's no surprise why the ride has been a hit. It's not only one of the premier rides for Europa Park, but the exact layout has been cloned eight times worldwide. Four of these clones can be found in China. A fifth was ordered for an unspecified park, but the deal fell through. This is where Dreamworld comes in. They purchased this coaster from Mach, which allowed them to get the ride on a reduced timeline. But there would be some changes to the base layout as I noted at the start. Blue Fire features a single launch that accelerates riders to 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour. Steel Typen would have a swing launch with three smaller launches, two forwards and one backwards, and the ride's top speed was increased to 65 miles per hour or 105 kilometers per hour. After that backwards launch, there would be a twisted spike. This element specifically would increase the ride's max height from 125 feet or 38 meters to 128 feet or 39 meters. More interestingly, one train received a spinning car. I'm unsure whether this feature was originally requested by the Chinese park or Dreamworld, but I'm guessing it was requested by the latter. The Gold Coast theme parks have developed a reputation for gimmicky back rows in their most recent coasters. These seats had a different but highly marketable experience that has been made into an upcharge. DC Rivals Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World started the trend with a backwards row in 2017. Then SeaWorld's Leviathan was announced to feature a backwards row as well. So I suspect Dreamworld saw the trend and hopped on it with their newest coaster. The ride was always going to be themed to a snake. The park trademarked two names, Hysteria and Steel Typen, and thank goodness they picked the latter. It is a far better name. Typens are the world's most venomous snake so it's a fitting name for a big coaster like this. One thing that did change from the initial renderings was the landscaping around the area. The announcement video showed a lot of trees and rock work in the ride's immediate area. This was scaled back. The area underneath the course looks a bit unfinished to be honest. It's a lot of dirt. Only a few trees were planted and they're quite small as of this recording. Then only two valleys got small rock tunnels, but these do look very nice. It's reminiscent of the rock tunnels you see in Europa's Blue Fire. One cool addition was the midway approaching the attraction. It is this covered walkway. The roof is designed to look like a snake's vertebrae. Then landscaping aside, the coaster looks great. I love the shade of orange. The coaster really catches your eye as you pull into Dreamworld's parking lot. The ride runs right up against it. It is the closest coaster to the main entrance, and many people understandably make it their first stop. I visited Dreamworld on a pretty quiet day. Steel Typen was running just one train. Despite this, the coaster was no more than a 1 to 2 train wait for most of the day. The coaster did have a half hour wait for the first two hours, so this is one to return to in the afternoon. There are a few additional ways to beat the crowds though. First, this coaster features a single rider line. You can access it from the start of the line, and few people are using it, so it seems like a great time saver whenever the ride is busy. Second, this ride accepts the park's Ride Express Skip the Line service. This is a paid system and should get you on the ride in 2-3 cycles maximum. Third, you can pay for the spinning seat. You reserve a half hour window, but from what I saw, they were not strictly enforcing the time as long as you had one. From what I saw, people didn't have to wait more than a cycle or two for this experience. This is an extra fee and will cost you $25 per person per ride but I think it's a must experience. I saw more people doing it than the backwards rows at the other Gold Coast parks. First, only one of the trains has the spinning seats, so you need to make sure you're not visiting Dreamworld when that particular train is undergoing its annual refurbishment. 
From what I've seen so far, this seems to take place around Q1. For us, the maintenance was actually extended a week and we had to shift a few activities around to get to Dreamworld on a day when it was available. Second, you can either purchase your time at the park's main gift shop or online. If you buy it at the gift shop, you are given a wristband. The operators mark it after you have been on the attraction. If you buy your ticket online, you need to stop at the Fairy Tale Treasures gift shop to get your wristband. This is just off the entry plaza adjacent to the pathway over to Steel Typen. Each train has five cars. On the standard train, each car has two rows of two to accommodate a max of 20 guests. The train with a spinning car can accommodate just 18 passengers. The first four cars are identical with two rows of two, but the back car is just two spinning seats. This is to accommodate the increased clearance needed for the rotation. When you reach the load platform, the attendant will assign you a seat. They would have two to three trains worth of people batched up on the load platform. The attendants are happy to accommodate row requests if you have one. Excluding the spinning car, I have a slight preference for row 1, but every seat in this coaster is a winner. Once it's your turn to board, everything must go in the bins off to the side. This includes bags, anything in your pockets, and even glasses with a strap. This is the standard protocol for Australian thrill rides. You then board your familiar mock trains. These are the same ones seen in their launch and mega coasters. You have a raised seat with a snug but comfortable laugh bar. Then for redundancy, this rise RFID seatbelts. Do not buckle these yourself. They must be done by staff members, and they have to tap the back side of the vehicle to confirm it's engaged. I'm now going to outline the ride experience. I will start my standard element by element breakdown. Assuming you're in the forward facing seats, I will return to touch on the spinning aspect afterwards. Once checked, you turn out of the station and pause on the launch track. The switch track behind you moves into place. The operators will then come over to the speaker and give you a countdown. This leads to launch one. The single launch on Blue Fire is quite good. It has some rare oomph for a mock launch. The initial launch on Steel Typen builds up decent speed, but it only has a slight kick to it. But it's still better than something like the launches on Copperhead Strike at Carowinds or Capital Bullet Train at Motion Gate Dubai. You then stall out in the ride's giant turnaround. I figured this would give some weightlessness like most elements when you stall, but it didn't do too much. It feels like a spike in a Vacoma family boomerang. You then awkwardly coast backwards for it seems like an eternity. There is a lot of straight track between you and the LSM fins. Those are pretty close to the station, but the second launch has a solid kick to it when it engages. You can't quite see when it will start, so it sort of jerks your body over the lap bar when it does kick in. Then comes the twisted spike. It only gave a pinch of weightlessness. The spike is fairly gradual with regards to its vertical incline. Compare that to a purely vertical spike where you get considerable amount of float. What I liked best about this element on Steel Typen was the pullout. It was super tight, so it delivered a very strong surge of positive Gs on both passes. This will cause your lap bar to tighten if you had any room, but the operators will usually have it firmly pressed against your lap anyway. The third launch honestly feels like nothing. The speed boost is pretty minimal. Now comes the usual blue fire layout. You start off with this giant turnaround. You slow down mightily at the apex, resulting in some lateral hang time. You get more of this up front. In back, you get some whip on the descent to compensate. The pullout heads through a rock tunnel, much like the one in blue fire, so you get some solid G's and a near miss. This is immediately followed by the ride's largest inversion, a big vertical loop. You get some hang time over the top, particularly in the front half of the train. It feels similar to the second loop on Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. This is followed by a fast and snappy right hand turn. It has some decent whip to it. You then get a fine blast of positive G's and rise upwards into the mid-course brake run. You get some nice floater airtime if you're up front going into this. The train then cruises through the brake run without slowing down. Then you have a sharp drop to kick off the second half. This gives good floater air time for those in the back row. You then have a twisted horseshoe roll. You have two corkscrews broken up by a low turn. Each inversion offers good hang time up front. Those in back get a bit less hang time, but the element is whippier as a trade-off. You then have an S-hill that pierces through the vertical loop. 
It offers some more fun floater airtime in any row. You then head around a turn and experience the ride's best element by far, the inline twist. This element is spectacular, it is one of the world's best inversions, it is a super tight and whippy element. It offers wild laterals and airtime simultaneously. It reminds me of the Mosasaurus roll in Velocicoaster. It truly tries to eject you from the train. You then have one last turn and hit the brakes. You return to the station, ending the 3,900 foot or 1,200 meter long coaster, which is a bit more track than the standard blue fire layout. Now, how does this ride change with the spinning row? If you're unfamiliar with the mock extreme spinners, those coasters can have a controlled spin. The spin is random, but the controlled part limits the speed, meaning they will not spin like a top like their smaller spinning coasters. The prototype version of this model in Silver Dollar City's Time Traveler feels like a slow rotation. This was ramped way up for Plopsaland's Ride to Happiness. On Steel Typen, the spin is even more gradual than that of Time Traveler if you ride in pairs. I maybe made six full spins over the course of the ride. Now I have heard you can get more of a spin if you ride solo, but I was riding with my wife each time. What the rotation does do is it changes your point of reference. You still experience some elements forwards, but you take many of them sideways or backwards. This really changes the experience, and I want to highlight some elements that improve notably. One of the biggest beneficiaries is the twisted spike. This was the one part where you would reliably rotate, and made the twist extra disorienting. Another element where you'd routinely spin was the top of the big turnaround. It makes the lateral hang time even cooler when you're possibly dangling towards the ground. The airtime moments get noticeably better if you take them backwards. They'll give you a bit of a falling sensation as you're pulled backwards. Then the last three inversions improve as well. The two corkscrews feel like an acrobatic flip. Then that final inversion is godly. Taking that inline twist sideways or backwards took my breath away. It feels totally out of control. That was especially the case in my final ride when we spun throughout it. Getting those laterals and centripetal forces simultaneously is one of a kind. It truly feels like you're going to be launched from the train, but you have no clue which way you're going to come out. This spin also helps with the pacing. There are a few points when the ride lets its foot off the gas for an instant, namely the mid-course and the turns, but overall, this coaster keeps you engaged start to finish. Then in terms of smoothness, every single row in this coaster is glossy smooth. There was not a hint of a rattle or discomfort. So what would I rate Steel type in? I would give this coaster a 9 out of 10. This is a very good multi-launch coaster. I love how varied the layout is. You get a little bit of everything. Launches, airtime hills, and inversions. This results in you getting pretty much any coaster sensation you could possibly want. Positive Gs, negative Gs, hang time, laterals, and even lateral hang time. Then the spinning car elevates the experience to the excellent tier. It adds so much rewritability, and it adds an out of control element. As I noted, it's not the spinning that does it. It is the different orientation, whether it be sideways or backwards, that you take all the elements. So how is the experience compared to Mach's other coasters? I would take Steel Typen's forwards row over Blue Fire by a very slim margin. I like the backwards launch and spike a bit more than the single launch you get on that ride, but it is darn close. As for the spinning seats, this ride does not come close to matching the insanity of Ride to Happiness. However, I think the experience is slightly better than Time Traveler. While you don't have that awesome vertical drop or a hillside setting, I think the steel type and layout has a bit more to it. That spinning car makes it a borderline top 50 steel coaster for me, and one of the best coasters in all of Australia. So those are my thoughts on steel type and at Dreamworld. What are your thoughts on this coaster? And if you've ridden this ride, let me know if you've been able to experience the spinning car and how much you spun. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.